Let me just comment about China. Uh, China is a very coercive government, and 30 years ago they put in a policy of one child per family. And that has been used very often in this country to say, oh, we can't do, do the way China did. Uh, the reason they gave 30 years ago, the official government justification statement for that policy was something like this. Population growth interferes with economic development. Now, in the 30 years since they put that in, they have proven that that is true. We haven't learned that yet in this country. Now, they have another thing that's happened as a result of that. They estimate that they have avoided something like 300 million births in the 30-year period, this very coercive policy. Now, they come to the global warming conferences and say, look, the, our contribution to reduction of China's contribution to global warming because of these 300 million avoided births, that's more than any of the other countries have done. And it's a little hard to argue with that. So I, I think we need to recognize that, an, that another related problem is China's not a democracy, but a democracy cannot sustain, cannot uh, overcome overcome overpopulation. And, and Isaac Asimov said words to this effect, that democracy cannot survive overpopulation. And let me give you an example there. When I came to Boulder on the faculty in 1950, the population of Boulder was 20,000 people. There were nine members of the city council. Today it's 100,000. There are nine members of the city council. We have five times as many constituents per council member now as there were 60 years ago. Democracy in Boulder today is only 20% of what it was 60 years ago. And by the time our population gets up to the size of the population of China, we'll be no more democratic than they are. Yeah. Was China really ultimately effective in their coercion? You mentioned coercion. Oh, yes. They've cut their growth rate in half. They're now down about half a percent instead of one percent growth per year. But that's still an enormous increase in population. And the, uh, they have now sort of relaxed it in the countryside where they need labor on the farms. And, uh, but they're still trying to hold to it in the cities. But uh, it, it's, so they're still growing. It's still a big problem for them. And India is even a bigger problem their family planning situation fell on some evil days some a decade or two ago, and uh, their population is growing, and what is it? It's predicted that uh, the population of India will be larger than that of China within a, a decade or so. So uh, China's cut their population growth rate roughly in half, but it's still growing. But now most of Europe is at zero population growth. In some cases, they're negative population growth. And the negative population growth presents some real problems in the field of Social Security, care for the elderly, and so on. But the, uh, it, it's really tragic. I remember reading a note in the paper that the Prime Minister, I think, of Greece was noting these statistics for Greece, and the population wasn't growing the way he thought it should be. And so he was going to, you know, sounding the alarm, we've got to get back into production in order to keep the population from declining. The tragedy is that a declining population is the, the only route towards sustainability.